You're listening to Black Parents Aging, where we help you navigate caring for aging loved ones. Every Wednesday, we'll discuss how to help your parents successfully navigate this new season of life. We are going to talk about legal, health, technology, and finances. Here's your host attorneys, Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Black Parents Aging. As you can hear, it's not Nicola at the helm. So you have me, Olivia, today. And I have two really special guests that I am super excited to talk to. We have Derek Murray and Adrian Davis, and they are financial planners. And so we are going to jump right in and get to talking to them about things we should know as children of aging parents so that we can better help our parents. So if you guys can just start by introducing yourself, telling us kind of how you got into this area of law, and then I have a whole list of questions to ask. So let's start with intros. Okay. My name is Adrienne Davis. I'm a CPA and financial advisor or financial planner. I'm currently based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I work with Northwestern Mutual Goodwin Wright as a business partner. A little bit about how I got into the space. I mentioned I'm a CPA based certified in Georgia, and I worked in the tax accounting space for quite a few years. So I've been in the financial industry probably about 10 years now, and I know I like the problem solving aspect of finances, but I did did not feel a passion or purpose behind what I was doing, which was big business taxes, corporations, partnerships, as well as high net worth individuals. I'm able to make more of an impact working with people that I know in my larger network, helping them create a financial plan. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Derek, what about you? Absolutely. My name is Derek Murray. I'm a certified financial planner, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I have my practice through North You're a rare West. breed, Derek. You're a rare yes. breed, born yes, and raised. That, that's why I got to make sure I put that out there. <laughs> born and raised inside 285, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, right? Be specific. So, let's be specific. <laughs> so I've had my practice with Northwestern Mutual for eight years and working with a lot of families, business owners, aging clients, and also younger clients. So across the spectrum, being able to work with folks. But I got into what I do really right out of college. I was an economics major out of Furman University and connected with Northwestern. And eight years later, here I go. Okay, so this is good. So I know you have clients of all ages, but what I want to talk about today is specifically the aging client population. Those are our people. And, you know, those are also our parents. And so I want us to really talk about that. Let's start off with this. You say that you're financial planners, and we assume that everybody knows what that is. Can you guys break down what does that mean? What do you do? Who are financial planners? I'll go ahead and get started on how I run my practice. And Derek and I actually, we team together and we have a lot of clients together. So what we focus on is comprehensive financial planning, and it looks different for different clients. If the household income is over $500,000, that planning looks different for a household income of $100,000, for example. Sure. So for us, it's going in there and essentially meeting with our potential client and seeing how we can assist. And this may be as simple as helping them with budgeting and cash flow planning. It may be helping them explore their employer benefits if they work for an employer. It may look like managing their risks when it comes to insurance, managing their investments when it comes to the stock market, or planning for retirement. And so I think that you make a great point about how we can focus on a certain population, the aging population, and how that planning may look different for them because they are already probably in the stages of planning for retirement and more so looking about the distributions and how they can protect their assets that when they get into retirement. So I'll let Derek go ahead and pivot. Well, she said a I, lot, Derek. Yeah, well said. I, no, I think well said. The big thing I always explain us in terms of planners is that we do holistic planning, right? So as Adrian said, sometimes it's just foundational things. Sometimes it's really complex financial plans, but we touch every aspect of planning, investments, estate planning, insurance, 
college education planning, retirement planning, debt management. So there's a lot of different things we touch. So it's all about figuring out who we're sitting across from or who we're across the Zoom from, right? And right. being able to get an understanding where they are and trying to get, help them reach the goals they're looking to achieve. So I think that's an important part, point because I think sometimes people think when you say financial planner, you don't need a financial planner unless you're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. And so I think it's important for people to know that, no, you need a financial planner, even if you need to figure out like a budget and how you can afford to put some money away or do some investing. Like there is a wide range of reasons you would have an, a financial planner or may need one. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the big thing. We always say, hey, we will meet you on your level when it comes to the planning we do. So, okay. So let's talk about our season clients. How would the approach look different for say someone that comes to you at 60 versus someone that comes to you at 25? Yeah, it's completely different, right? I mean, one thing we know is obviously their runway is shorter, but what's the run rate? Well, when we think about your time to retirement or your time to financial secure, financial independence, your whatever your goals are, you're on a shorter track to that versus gotcha. when you were 25 versus now you're 60. So what we got to do is now it's time to dot every I and cross every T when it comes to the plan because we're a couple of years away possibly from retirement. Sure, but the other thing we know is that people are living longer and longer, right? Which is one of the difficult things about retirement is that we don't know how long we're going to need to be able to generate some type of unearned income, right? Because we don't know when you're going to pass away. So what we have to make sure when it's different from working with a 25, 30 year old who are able to take a lot of risk, who mm -hmm. have a lot of time to be able to ride the waves of the market, that's different from a 60 year old because it's more about wealth preservation. It's more about income distribution in that phase. It's completely different when it comes to investment planning. It's completely different when it comes to insurance planning where we get into high level estate planning as well. So I think the biggest thing that's different is just really looking at that age and stage of life and being able to understand, hey, what our goals are, how close we are to those goals, and then how can we minimize every risk out there possible to be able to achieve those goals. That's good. Adrian, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think Derek summed everything up pretty well. <laughs> Okay, so the podcast is for the children of aging parents, right? So we know how difficult sometimes our parents can be. What are the gems or the pointers or the things that we as children of aging adults should be thinking about and should be maybe asking our parents about a little bit when we are thinking about our parents and whether they have a financial planning, where their assets are and how they look? Like, what are the things that we need to be aware of? I think the first thing is just having the conversation, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I think too many times we just don't know. We just never had that conversation just because of the lack of knowledge or experience in those areas within our communities. So I think number one is just having the conversation of, hey, let's talk about playing. Let's talk about, hey, mom, dad, something happens to you. What happens to the house? Something happens to you. What happens to these other assets? Hey, what is your plan for retirement? So I think the first thing is just awareness and being able to be open and have those conversations that may be difficult based on family dynamics. So having a third party, like a financial planner there can usually help facilitate with that conversation. And I think it also could be helpful, Adrian, for you to talk about your experience with your family. So I think yes. how open you guys are in terms of your planning, what you know about your parents and everything. So speak a little about that, Adrian. Sure. I'd love to. Uh, just to give some background, my dad is actually a CPA. So he has a finance background. And in my experience, my parents have been 
pretty transparent and open when it comes to finances. I knew their salaries when I was growing up. If they made a big purchase like a home, I knew how much their mortgage was. I knew how much they were paying for the house. This is as early as if I was in middle school or high school. We had a lot of open conversations when it came to finances. So Derek and I actually did some recent planning with my parents. On the personal side, they did their estate planning where they followed up on their estate planning. So they have their wills and trusts that they have set up. And I have the information. We went through it like, hey, if we pass, this is what you need to do with the house. This is what you need to do with the car. This is who the power of attorney is. This is the structure that we have set up where if something happens and how you'll have it paid out. It's a very uncomfortable conversation to have thinking about your parent passing away. But when you think about one, everyone passes away. So it's not unique in that aspect, but also having loss in my family where I've seen not having a plan in place splinter the family dynamic. We realize how important it is to have that locked down. So when we did the planning with Derek, my parents decided they wanted to do some long-term care insurance just because they have experience of seeing relatives have to go to long-term care facilities or not mainly one because they are not able to afford in-home care or maybe have to go to facilities that are not as nice just because they did not prepare accordingly for it. So my parents knew it was a priority for them to have long-term care insurance, talk about it uh, with us. And of course, as a financial planner, I was able to be looped in on the process. So you've given us so much. Also, I think your parents are unicorns, Um, (laughs) but that is really the goal. That is amazing. And that is the tough conversations is something that Nicola and I are constantly talking to people about because it can be a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. to engage in that conversation. So we're always trying to give tips and tricks on like on the estate planning side, how to start that conversation. Absolutely. How did you start the conversation? And then do you guys have any tips and tricks on how to start? Because the financial conversation is a whole other thing. Like the fact that your parents were so transparent growing up, I don't know a lot of older black people like that. So I think that is amazing. But people are really keep their finances close to the vest, even with their kids. So what are some tips or tricks or some advice that you guys would give on how to even start that conversation? I think one thing in my experience growing up, it wasn't that open transparency. I mean, it wasn't hidden, but it just was not conversations that were had. So where I came in, once I became a financial advisor, where did I go? I, I turned around, went right back to my parents, right? And I think what helped me be able to have that conversation is the knowledge and the education that I already had about planning, about what they need to do about hey, where we are, what needs to happen with wills, long-term care, retirement planning, et cetera. So I think one thing that could help as we talk about kids going to young adults, going to their parents to talk about their planning, to talk about whether it's estate planning, retirement planning, or their assets is to come with some knowledge, right? To come with some level of just education or, or some tips around, hey, these are some of the things I've learned. I want want to make sure I share this with you versus just coming in as you're prying and just kind of want to know just to know, right? So I think the education is one thing to be able to lead with because as you want enlightened people, they open up right? So everyone wants to have a conversation when they learn something, right? So I think that's one of the ways I would advise folks to approach their parents is come with some knowledge, come with some tips, come with some education, and whether it's videos or what it may be to be able to approach and have that open conversation. I think that's a really good idea. Adrian. Mm-hmm. what about you? What was your parents' kind of philosophy? Because I feel like, and maybe I'm <laughs> wrong, I feel like they were not the norm in how they kind of approach being being transparent with you about what was going on in their finance. Yes. I think it one was a gift and a curse, right? Because my perception was skewed and I did not realize that my experience was so unique. So even getting around my peers and talking about finances, I probably asked people questions about their finances that they weren't comfortable with just because that's my experience. <laughs> so that's 
fun. I love it. Was, it was a seamless transition. I think I remember growing up and doing, my mom would balance the checkbook. And I remembered my brother and I would sit around the dining room table with her. So it wasn't a secret about what they were spending their money on. I think that they both knew that finances were very important to them and they wanted to facilitate that structure in our household so that we wouldn't make any mistake that they made, or at least they could say, hey, I taught them this and they have that knowledge. So I remember learning about credit cards and how to use them when I was younger. And I used to read the Wall Street Journal, It maybe in high school and college, my dad would give us articles to read <laughs> and we would discuss them after. Essentially, I don't think my mom went as far as to do book reports, but we did have to have discussions about some of the things that we were interested in or some of the things we learned in the article. I even was introduced to my parents' financial advisor when I got out of college because they wanted me to start investing when I got out of college. And I had no idea what it was, but I think talking to someone who had that experience and was used to talking to people who had no idea about it helped me to understand how the stock market worked and how I could invest my money. That's really amazing. And I'm yeah. glad that you shared that because that is a totally different perspective perspective and story from what we usually hear. And sometimes we need to hear that. So that is phenomenal. I want to compare it a little bit to maybe therapy, where I know the new generation talks about therapy a lot more. And I think finances and therapy could kind of go hand in hand about it being super personal. People don't talk about it. They're not transparent about it, but everyone essentially should have an introduction to one, they're having the best mental health possible and having the best financial health possible. I realize the more that I talk about my experience with therapy, people are more receptive to it and it's not as taboo. And I'm hoping that's the same thing can happen with finances by having conversations with friends and parents or encouraging my friends to have those same conversations with their parents that perhaps that could change their trajectory and more people will talk about it. I love that. I think that is absolutely true. I think that is absolutely true. I want to talk a little bit about now, Derek, you, what piqued my interest and I was like, okay, we need to get them on the podcast. Was you were like, I have a long-term care certification. And I was like, huh, what does that even mean for financial planners? I know what long-term care planning looks like on the estate planning side and why it's important. Can you talk a little bit about that on the financial planning side? Oh, absolutely. A, a big part of the planning that we're doing, is certainly with our aging population, is retirement planning. And retirement planning is when you get to a point where you've gathered enough assets to be able to create an unearned income stream that allows you to work when you want, how you want, with who you want, for how long you want, right? So it's to create that financial flexibility and create that financial security. Now, with that, there are some things that could possibly put a dagger in that financial security. One of the biggest risks of retirement planning is some type of extended care event, right? So one whether it's someone who's single or one spouse gets sick or injured or hurt to where they need some level of care to where they may need to go to a facility or they may need someone to come into the house. Sure. And we all know that is really, really expensive. Yes. So what we don't want is to have to spend down all of our retirement assets or spend down our income or sell off houses or sell off business or other assets to have to pay for that care. So what long-term care insurance does is it allows us to offload a good part of that risk to the insurance company, right? It's so does the long-term care insurance, does that then become a part of the planning for you guys? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So what we do is we say, hey, if we know we're looking at needing to produce X amount of income per month to our clients, we also want to figure out, hey, what amount of that income needs to go to things like health insurance? What amount of that income will still go even if your house is paid off for property taxes? What amount of that income will go for things like long-term care insurance, life insurance? We still have to take a small piece of your income to pay for those protection pieces to protect the larger part of your income and the larger part of your assets. So it's absolutely a part of the planning and a part of the process. Do you have any 
stories or anything that may be able to drive that home to a larger degree. I know on our side, we talk a lot about working your whole life to accumulate these assets and then having to go into a nursing home or some sort of long-term care facility and then having to use all of the things that you've accumulated to pay for that. And so we talk a lot about goals and how we can achieve that goal and long-term care, especially now, most people over 60, 65 are going to spend at some amount of time at some point in, in a facility. Like that's just what the statistics say. Have you had an experience that really drove that home for you like in a real way? Well, for me, it's conversations with my client and okay. learn their experiences. Sure. Right? Because it's a very different conversation talking to someone who's had a parent, had a relative, had someone close to them need some level of care and being right. able to hear their stories and knowing the impact, right? Because there are a couple of different defaults when people are against long-term care. One thing they say is, well, my spouse will take care of each other. Well, one thing we know is that one spouse taking care of another spouse severely impacts the health of the healthier spouse right? The health in terms of physical, mental, and also just the lifestyle. So we don't want to drag our other spouse down by having or forcing them to be in a situation where they have to take care of them. So what we want is we want our spouse to be care managers, not caregivers. Oh, that's right? good. We want to be able to manage the care and not have to give the care. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to use our resources to provide care. What's the other one that a lot of people say? Oh, I have three kids. Well, my, That's it. I raised them. They going to have to take care of me. Well, the problem is, is typically you have one kid. You have that one that will step up. But what happens to their life? What sacrifices are they making to do that? But then also what level of resentment comes from the other siblings? Right? It's three of us, but I'm doing 90% of the work. Yes. Right? Because it's never going to be equal. So those are the things we think about of uh, making sure, hey, when we're planning around a possible extended care, long-term care event, not just the finances of it, but what impact would possibly that have on our family and our family members because of our age? And when we really have that candid conversation, most folks realize, hey, that makes sense. And we absolutely need this to be part of our plan. You have just given a whole word right there. You have covered all of the things we hear. And I'm going to ask you guys if you have some uh, tip that you always want people to know or understand about planning and financial planning. And we're going to leave it there because I think he just told us all we needed to hear, especially when we're dealing with our parents. So I will start with you, Adrian. What is one thing that you want our listeners to take away from the conversation? I think in a general aspect, when it comes to financial planning, don't be afraid to reach out to a financial planner and at least get a second opinion. And I meet a lot of people and they're like, hey, I'm taking care of things ourselves, but I kind of equate it to when people go to a personal trainer. Yes, it may be fine when you're working out on your own, but then you want to go to a trainer, for example, to make sure that you're doing things correctly, i.e. your form. And that's the biggest takeaway that I want people to have when they're listening, like go ahead and talk to a financial planner and not be as daunting to just have the conversation. That's really good. What about you, Derek? Yeah, I would just stay on the topic as we're talking about aging parents. Number one, like we mentioned earlier, be, be brave and have that conversation, right? So have that conversation with parents and let's, as Adrian mentioned, kind of trying to destroy that stigma about talking about our finances. But then certainly even more specific around long-term care, extended care, understand that there are options, right? There are many different options, many different different plan types. Because one of the other big things people say, oh, I hear that's expensive, right? So there's different ways of funding it. There's different tax benefits. You can run it through your business. There are many different options to be able to address that possible danger to, to your financial plan. So just understand that there are options and absolutely always feel free to reach out to the advisor if it's not us someone. <laughs> we are going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much. I think you dropped so many gems for our audience to 
listen to and then take heed to hopefully. As always, guys, we want to hear your feedback. So you know, you can go to social media and leave a comment, send us an email. We want to hear if you have suggestions for new episode ideas. If you have questions for our guests, we want to hear from you. And we will see you guys next time for another episode. You're listening to Black Parents Aging, where we help you navigate caring for aging loved ones. Every Wednesday, we'll discuss how to help your parents successfully navigate this new season of life. We are going to talk about legal, health, technology, and finances. Here's your host attorneys, Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson.